So it's amazing how Like I say, you know, chocolate Edomites. <laughs> chocolate cover Edomites. <laughs> white filler. Huh? White filler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's something, you know. But all praise to the most high man that, you know, we see another day closer to the kingdom and we're able to honor the new moon feast. As always, we'll start with Colossians 3.17, giving all praise and glory to the Heavenly Father, the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Can't go wrong with that. You know, matter people can call him whatever name they want to, but he said his name is the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You know what I mean? Forever. And the memorial to all generations. So whenever people want to come up with whoever they believe in as their God, then that's who the Most High, the creator of everything, said he is. You know? He identified himself as that, so that's what we got to look at. We go by that. You can't go wrong with that. So Colossians 3, 17. Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all for how some of us are outside, give it to you how for how some of us are outside. Right, so all that we say and do is going to be by how some of us are outside, or in the name of the anointed Savior, and we give Thanks to the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, as I first mentioned. We give him thanks for everything, but he's worthy to be praised for everything. He's worthy. Uh, so let's go to Numbers 10 and 10. So this is the beginnings of our months. This is the first day of the month. Whereas, you know, Esau started in uh, the first day of this year, started months, excuse me, uh, weeks ago. So this is the, actually would be the, like the beginning of the 11th month and the 12th month will start next next month, then the first of the year would start around somewhere after the middle of uh, Esau's third month. They will count 14 days from there, and that will be the Passover, which would be probably the fourth month around the second day. See, that's how we count. As far as dealing with the Holy Convocation, the new moons, and the feast days, and so forth, but not the Sabbath. You know, I think the most I did something with them Israelized <laughs> on that Sabbath. Mm -hmm. They, they, most I serious about the Sabbath. He really serious about that Sabbath. They, they do. Uh, he didn't change that. You just see what people don't understand. They just added their pagan names to those days, but they didn't make the Sabbath day be the fourth day. Like it was the seventh day. They didn't make that to be the fourth day or the fourth day to be the seventh day, like that. It just, it remained the same. Those that remained the same, just put a name on that day and it just kept on recycling over and over again, see? Whereas the seventh day is the seventh day, it's been the seventh day. That's the most I would deal with them. Because you know how the most I dealt with the Ethiopians. When they, when, they, when Salmon Esau put them in the land of Israel and, and they still want to try to follow their pagan gods and all that stuff, man, all their pagan, Pagan worship. Shoot, most I said lions in there to eat them up, kill them. Be serious about because that's the land that he loved. So you got to honor the Sabbath. Uh, Numbers 28 and 11. Numbers 28 and 11. So this is the beginning of the month. And if you go to shieldofwisdom.com, www.shieldofwisdom.com, you look on the, uh, the web page, you'll see at the bottom on the right-hand corner, at the right, on the right side, 
it'll say breaking news. You just click on that, it'll give you all the new moons and all the holy convocations all the way through Esau's year to the 12th month. You know, it's all there, so just in case you didn't know, now you know. No excuse. Let's read that. Numbers 28, 11th verse. Numbers chapter 28, verse 11. And in, the, and in the beginnings of your months, you shall offer a burnt offering unto the Most High. Two young bullocks and one ram, seven lambs of the first year without spot. So this is what we did on the new moon feast. This is what he told us to do, the beginnings of your months. Now, mind you, you gotta understand, this is not something he just give it to us now, but we are we had this already as far as uh, knowing the law of the new moon. We'll go to uh, Psalms 81 right quick. Because at this time, we're reading the law and we're in the wilderness. Con? So, this is something that was already ordained that we were doing before we got to the wilderness. Uh, Psalms 81 and 3. Psalm chapter 81 verse 3. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon and the time appointed on our solemn feast day. So it says, blow up the trumpet in the new moon in the time appointed, which we know he already says beginnings of the month, the first day of the month. That's the new moon. You know, you look, even Esau looked on uh, the news today. He even had the new moon. You know, right there showing the black moon <coughs> with the weather. It was shocking. You know, I, I've never seen that before, but he had it right there. So, go ahead. For this was a statute for Israel and a law of the, of, of the power of Jacob. This is a statute for Israel, for the 12 tribes of Israel, and a law of the power of Jacob. This is a law. So, knowing this, and you say, okay, well, I don't have to do it. Then you say, well, the laws of the Most High don't matter. You don't say a law. You say a law of the Most High, while Mashiach Yahushai of Jacob, the power of Israel. Read. This he ordained in Joseph for a testimony when he went out to the land of Egypt, where I heard a language that I understood not. See? So he went out through the land of Egypt, when he was in Egypt, and he heard a language that he understood not. So anyone want to talk about the Egypt, Egyptologists or whatever language they speak, the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he said he, he don't even understand whatever they're saying. They ain't got no power from him, because he said whatever they say, Google, Google, I go Google, whatever they say, he said he don't understand it, point blank. Second Chronicles 2 and 4. We'll start at verse uh, start at uh, verse 1. 2 and 1? Yeah. Second Chronicles chapter 2 verse 1. And someone determined to build a house for the, for the name of the Most High and a house for his kingdom. Right. King Solomon. He was determined to build a house because King David, he couldn't build a house because he had too much blood on his hand the most high, so he'd have killed too many people. <laughs> you know, they were, saying, they were singing a song about King David and Saul. They said, Saul killed thousands. The women were saying, singing a song saying, Saul killed thousands. David killed tens of thousands because that's why Saul got angry. You know, that's one of these. We have so many examples of how we should be in not following the way that our ancestors did, a bunch of degenerates at the time, at any time, we're a dysfunctional family, to show us how not to be, you know what I mean? Be happy for your brother, you know, your brother get a nice woman, they get a nice rib or whatever, be happy for him, especially your brother ain't had no rib or, you know what I mean? It's like, why be jealous? Do your own thing, you know what I mean? If you got to do something, do it. You know, if somebody exalt, exaltation, man, that's, that's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be happy for exaltation, man. We're supposed to be doing that for each other, exhorting one another. Go ahead. So Solomon was, was determined to build a house for the Most High in the name of the Most High. Read. And Solomon told, told out threescore and 10,000 men 
to bear burdens. Wow, three score and 10,000, that's 70,000 men to bear burdens, 70,000. You wonder how we did things, 70,000 men? That's a lot. Go ahead. And four score thousand to you in the mountain. Four score thousand. That's 80,000 to you in the mountain. Read. And 3,600 to oversee them. So 3,600 to, to watch over them, to be in charge. Go ahead. And Saul sent to Haram, the king of Tyre, saying, As thou didst deal with David, my father, and didst send him cedars to build him a house to dwell therein, even so deal with me. Right, so he wants the same benefits that he had gave, given uh, King David. Verse 4 is key, right? Read. Behold, I build a house to the name of the Most High Power, my power, to dedicate it to him and to burn before him sweet incense, and for the continual showbread, and for the burnt offerings morning and evening, on the Sabbath, and on the new moon. You see? So, he was, this is something that, I don't understand how you can take it lightly when he said, he's doing this, a continual dedication to the Most High, morning and evening on the Sabbath and on the new moons, read. And on the solemn feasts of the Most High, our power. See that, on the solemn feasts of Israel? The Most High. Of the Most High, our power. See what I'm saying, go ahead. This is an, uh, this is an ordinance forever to Israel. So it didn't stop. So this is an ordinance or order that the Most High gave to us, we the children of Israel, forever to Israel. Go ahead. And the house which I build is great, for great is our power above all idols. That's right. The house King Solomon built was great. Say, for great is our power above all the gods, all the idols of the other nations. That's why you still, you look at, uh, real quick, just go to uh, John 10, 22. Now from that period of time, all the way to this period of time where the Mashiach that was shy was on the earth. Listen, read this. St. John chapter 10, verse 22. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. Yeah, we just went through the feast of the dedication, and it was winter, right? right. Go ahead. And Mashiach outside walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. There it is. Still, still <laughs> valid. Still there. He walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. That's how powerful it was, man. Second Chronicles. Uh, 23. No. Second Chronicles 31 and 3. Second Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, chapter 31, verse 3. He appointed also the king's portion of his substance for the burnt offerings, to wit, for the morning and evening burnt offerings, and burnt offerings for the Sabbaths, and for the new moons, and for the set feast, as it is written in the law of the Most High Power. You see? We can't say it enough, whereas, unless you're a Christian, unless you want to be an Israelite Christian, where you say you're not under the law, but you're under mercy and grace, because you see this is a law of the Most High that was written, that they did these things when? Offerings for the Sabbaths, and for the new moons, and for the set feast days. We observed this. Just showing that it's all throughout the Bible. It's just, and this is what they had to go by, the Old Testament, you know? Uh, look at uh, Amos 8. 
and just show you how Israel was uh, kind of wicked in the mindset to look at following the Sabbaths or the feast days and instead of letting it be a delight and a joy, wanted to hurry up and end. But we start at verse 1. Amos chapter 8, verse 1. Thus hath the most high showed unto me, and behold, a basket of summer fruit. And he said, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then said the most high, why must you say unto me? The end is come upon my people of Israel. I will not again pass by them any more. And the songs of the temple shall be howlings in that day, said the Most High, power. There shall be many dead bodies in every place. They shall cast them forth with silence. Hear this, O ye that swallow up the needy, even to make the poor of the land to fail, saying, When will, when will the new moon be of God? See, read that again. Saying, when will the new moon be gone? Well, read verse 3 again. And the songs of the temple shall be howlings in that day, said the Most High Power. There shall be many dead bodies in every place. They shall cast them forth with silence. Yeah. It says, it's going to say the songs and the temple shall be howlings in that day, said the Most High. There shall be many dead bodies in every place. They shall cast them forth with silence. They're not going to be saying anything concerning that. Go ahead. Hear this, O ye that swallow up the needy, even to make the poor of the land to fail, saying, When will the new moon be gone? Yeah, when will the new moon be gone? When will the new moon be gone? When is it going to be over with? When will the new moon be gone? Go ahead. That we may sell corn. That we may sell corn. Let you know that we ain't wasn't selling and buying on the Sabbath day or the new moon. You know what I'm saying? When will the new moon be gone? When is it going to be over with? that we may sell corn, read. And the Sabbath, that we may set forth wheat, making the ephah small, and the shekel great, and the falsifying the balances by deceit. See, being wicked, man. Go ahead. That we may buy the poor for silver, and the needy for a pair of shoes. Yeah. And sell the ref refu refuse of the wheat. Yeah, man. Just they just want to get over on our people, as some of our people are. They ain't even consider no Sabbath at all. Even if I was looking at it uh, this first day, I'm like, man, they're not honoring no Sabbath. Even if it was supposed to be the first day, they don't honor no Sabbath. They do everything under the sun like it's a regular day. Even though they go to church, they don't honor this. They don't. I mean. How do they justify this? You know, they do everything as they normally would do, like everybody else, sailing and doing everything. This is Israel trying to make money, merchandise of us, right? The Most High has sworn by the excellency of Jacob. Surely, I will never forget any of their works. Right, he said he will never forget any of their works. And somebody broke the dang on here. Get uh, First Samuel twenty. He said, "Gonna forget that." And see, people think they could just get away with everything, do whatever they want to do. Most I said, "Hey, it's being written in the books." He said, "I ain't gonna forget none of their works." Uh, look at uh, start at verse four. It's concerning Jonathan, who was Saul's son, 1 Samuel 20 and 4. 
this just show you how true friendship was with Jonathan and uh, King David. Read that. First Samuel chapter 20, verse 4. Then said Jonathan unto David, Whatsoever thy soul desire, I will, I will even do it for thee. So he told King David, whatever his soul desire, whatever he wanted, he's going to do it for him. This, the, this is Saul's son, Jonathan. Read. And David said unto Jonathan, Behold, tomorrow is the new moon. So to, he told him, tomorrow is the new moon. Read. And I should not fail to sit with the king at meat. Say, so I should not fail to sit with the king at meat because it's a feast, the new moon feast. Go ahead. But let me go, that I may hide myself in the field until the third day at even. Right, let me go, I may hide myself in the field until the third day at even. Read. If thy father at all miss me, then say, David earnestly asked leave of me that he might run to Bethlehem, his, his city. For there is a yearly sacrifice there for all the family. There is a, read it again. And, and I, if thy father at all miss me, then say, David earnestly asked leave of me that he might run to Bethlehem, his city. For there is a yearly sacrifice there for all the family. Right, so say, let me go to my family. Tell him, tell him I'm going to my family. Go ahead. If he say thus, it is well, thy servant shall have peace. But if he be very wrong, then he, then, then be sure that evil is determined by him. Right. So if he be wrong, he, he going he to try to bring evil upon me. So look at uh, 18, verse 18. First Samuel chapter 20, verse 18. Then Jonathan said to David, Tomorrow is the new moon. And thou shalt be missed, because they, because thy seat will be empty. He told him, he said, hey, you're going to be missed because your seat going to be empty, man. You're not going to be there. He just told him, you know, give him leave to the third day. This first day going to be the new moon, the next day, then the third day he's going to come around again. Uh, verse 24. First Samuel chapter 20, verse 24. So David hid himself in the field, and when the new moon was come, the king sat him down to eat meat. And the king sat upon his seat, as at other times, even upon his seat by the wall. And Jonathan arose, and Jonathan arose.